It's interesting you say that. So it, there's another statistic that, that says that, you know, the vast majority, actually close to 85% of giving in the arts comes not from large wealthy foundations, but from ordinary citizens who see the needs in their community. So it's really echoing differently perhaps than, than policymakers do. So it's really echoing what you've experienced. And also, you know, I'd like to point out one organization that was founded by Chris Vroom, it's called Artadia in 99, and it's a nonprofit. What they do is they identify innovative visual artists and supports them with unrestricted merit-based financial awards and connects them to a network of opportunities. So it's, it's completely unrestricted, but what he did is he kind of created this network of people, of collectors, who are interested in supporting these artists and perhaps purchasing their work, supporting their work, really connecting with, with uh, the, the artist. And then he also co-founded a website that's called Artspace, where it's an online marketplace, again, to connect artists and their work to collectors and institutions. So, I mean, this came from one individual who decided to bring together his friends who are interested in the art and want to connect with one artist in particular and help them thrive and grow. So it's um, I'm totally echoes, you know, what, what you were saying, what you're observing. And uh, I think in the brief, there's also examples in New York of, uh, of things that are being done at the community level, such as the Mosaic Network and Fund in the New York um, Community Trust that brings together art funders and art organization leaders uh, in New York City. So again, we have that much more like local connection. So it's, a, it's a great model and philanthropy is, um, it's so uniquely American, and uh, so many people feel that, you know, 47% in one study feel that philanthropy, prefer philanthropy over government to solve some of the social problems in, in America. So it's a big part of the art world. And this Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's important for us to normalize. We have to normalize the support of the arts and shift what philanthropy looks like. You know, I mean, to an extent, who's not paying taxes, you know, in some way. And um, I learned early on, you know, my mother was pretty big, um, not necessarily as a patron in the arts, but, you know, she was into, you know, even with modest resources, she was going to figure out whether it was an in-kind or making sure that we gave to, you know, Goodwill or Catholic Charities or a women's shelter, you know, just making sure that there was some sort of contribution that happened every year, whether it was financial or some sort of um, uh, resources. And, you know, as I got older, uh, of course, that transitioned into, you know, my, my interest as, you know, a board member or, uh, you know, even if it's just a truly modest donation here or there or getting a membership at different institutions, even if I don't live in town, you know, I've found different ways, um, you know, to support. And a lot of people don't understand. It's like, yeah, it's great to get a membership. It's, it's not always something that is, is nice for your family to do or, or to engage, you know, be able to engage a museum um, or a gallery institution, et cetera. But it, it supports them. It supports the, them being able to keep their doors open. And so, you know, by having a membership um, at a museum, uh, different spaces, it allows them, yes, to continue to keep the doors open, but also it provides an opportunity for you to enjoy some of the art as well. So it's really um, a value that's twofold. And of course, I'm speaking specifically to museums now, but if you look at it, I mean, even if it's you're moving into a new home and, you know, you want to buy some artwork, no one says you have to have $30,000 to buy some artwork, you know, buy a print from an artist, buy a poster, you know, buy anything, um, as opposed to spending, you know, a couple hundred dollars, you know, at a, at a department store or something on a piece of artwork that they mass produced, you know, find an artist that will sell you a work on paper or that's just starting out and you could have some original work um, while also having a, building a relationship with an artist in your community or somewhere somewhere around. So I think it's just changing what it looks like, what it looks like to support the arts, what it looks like to be a philanthropist, what it looks like to be a buyer, 
you know, if we start to change the narrative and what, what we're seeing and what we're saying when we're talking about those titles, I think that we could normalize it in a way that makes it natural. This is natural. Supporting the art should be as natural as buying gasoline for a, from a pump, you know, as, as natural as it can be, because that's how integrated art and design is into our everyday lives. Yeah. So the process by which we're supporting it should just be that unencumbered. It should be that easy. And it should be, you know, we should be finding new ways every day um, to, to integrate and support, you know, the, the creative economy.